Good morning, Anthony. You know, the steam train era in America lasted all the way from the 1820s to the 1960s, but nearly all of those locomotives, oh, excuse me, nearly all of those locomotives, once powered by coal and oil, are long gone. And the few that remain on the rails typically don't go very far. But we recently found one, however, that regularly takes travelers on a 65-mile journey back in time using the most modern technology. The crowds arrive 363 days a year. Good morning, how are we doing? To board the only Hi. train in America bound for the Grand Canyon. All aboard! Departing each day, with the exception of Christmas Eve and Christmas Day, from the town of Williams, Arizona. Oh, all right, what are you shooting at? A throwback to both Western and car culture alike. Part of Route 66 still runs through here. It's Arizona's last town to be passed over by the interstate. Before there was an interstate, before there was even Route 66, there was 4960 and the Grand Canyon Railway, which started in 1901. What's the biggest surprise when people come see this train? I think that it's still operating. Sam Lanter is a 40-year veteran engineer and chief mechanical officer for the Grand Canyon Railway. Well, I like to put it, you know, it's a live dinosaur. You know, people see them stuffed sitting in museums. And uh, there's a few left in this country still operating. Built in 1923, engine 4960 makes its way to the canyon once a month. It may be old, but 4960 is no fossil and no longer burns fossil fuels. We had to find a way to keep it running, and so it's burning waste vegetable oil now. So we're talking shrimp, potato chips, french fries. That's how it starts in a restaurant somewhere, is uh, cooking food. How many miles to the gallon? Well, it's for how many gallons to the mile. It Bob Baker is the railway's general manager, who sought a greener, more modern method to run this 90-year-old locomotive. I was watching a TV program one night, and this young man was pouring oil from a fast food restaurant into his diesel engine vehicle and drove it down the street. And here, here we have it today, a 1923 steam engine running on waste vegetable oil. The oil, much of it from the railway's own restaurant, is filtered before use. But it isn't free. It's a commodity costing nearly the same as standard diesel fuel. On average, about $3 per gallon. It's the environmental cost, however, that most concerns the railway. Versus the old engines, this is as green as it can get. I mean, how green? It, I believe it's very green. Um, we have difficulty putting smoke out of the stacks. Some of the people that like to take the photographs of the big plumes of black smoke coming out of the steam engine, we have difficulty doing that. Getting that plume of smoke long associated with burning coal or crude is now achieved by adding sand to the furnace. The clean burning fuel, which does not harm the environment, is also less harmful to the engine, extending the life of an otherwise dying breed. So there are only a few of these dinosaurs left. That's correct, and, uh, and even the ones that are left they usually have limited op opportunity for operation. Some 250,000 steam engines were built in North America during the steam era. Today, fewer than 2,000 remain, most supplying spare parts to the roughly 100 locomotives still on the rails. So what's the message here that, that something that's old technology can do something pretty cool? Well, I think the message for us is if we're going to keep the dinosaur alive, we've got to feed him correctly. And so it's a demonstration that two technologies can marry themselves. We can take our 1923 machine and marry 21st century environmental technology and come up with a, a, a good product. And you know what I say to that? Yeah, I, I got to pull the whistle more than once. It was a lot of fun. I bet you pulled it all the whole I, way. As often as I could. <laughs> but the interesting thing about this is 200,000 people a year actually take this trip. And the unknown, like, environmental fact about it is that of that means 70,000 cars are not going to the Grand Canyon. They're taking them off the road. Uh -huh. Number one, I knew you were going to pull that whistle before this piece was over. I just knew it. <laughs> and that looks like smoke coming out of the, um, what do you call it, the smokestack, the yeah. chimney. What, what is it called? 
It's called the smokestack. Oh, the smokestack. <laughs> I didn't know if it had a technical term, smarty yes, pants, we, but we, that looks like smoke, but it's not. No, everyone wants to see the smoke because that's what they remember. Right. So they actually pour sand into the engine to create that smoke because there's no smoke coming out. They want the photo up. They want the photo Where up. does the engineer buy his Casey Jones outfit there? They still sell those? Apparently they do. It's, is that central casting or <laughs> what? He looks like a movie. He, he is. He does. But he, he like you know what? He, he's the guy who really makes this thing work. And the point is, when you figure out the technology, it's actually quite simple. Let's go to the old French fries, let's go to potato chips, and yes. it does smell a little like McDonald's in that engine. Oh, that ain't a bad thing, <laughs> no. in my opinion. Thank you, Peter. You